Well, let's go behind the headlines now and get top-tier analysis and a better understanding of the news and issues of the day. And for this, I'm joined now in the studio by the journalist, political affairs commentator and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance E. Cook. And I have to mention that the former chairman of the editorial board of Daily Trust newspaper, Mahmoud Jega, was also supposed to be here, but he just took ill a few minutes ago. But we're quite happy to have you here yeah, thank on you. your own. <laughs> and, and you heard the INEC recognized La Labour Party governorship candidate in Emo State Senator Ethan Ochonu claiming the mantle of the Labour Party there under the Julius Habure led leadership. But then we've seen the Lamedia Papa led faction saying things to the contrary and that he's not the candidate. While Senator Achonu's team accuses them of being sponsored by the APC in Imo State to cause disunity. What do you make of all that and of the interview that the Senator just gave us on this program? I mean, the Lamidia Papa uh, issue has been going on for a while, even at the national level. There was mm. a lot of disruption. And like he said, Labour Party members believe that he has been sponsored by other political parties to foment trouble and to cause problems for them. And it's what it is. And uh, you have called him the INEC recognized uh, 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 candidate. Mm. Which for, he is. Yeah, which he is. So we'll see how that goes. But he did say a lot of things. Um, in the afternoon, I tried to talk to a couple of people in Imo State. I wanted to understand what was going on on ground. Um, and the feelers, or the feeler that I was getting is that of, you know, a sort of suppression, helplessness, and, um, and uh, oppression that has been going on. And a couple of things that he said actually in line with what I was told in the afternoon. He said that um, the political atmosphere in the state is very tense, that's accurate. Uh, Imo is almost like Somalia. I was told that when I spoke to people on the phone. And then he said Olu is worst hit. Olu is the local government where Hopo Zadema, the governor, comes from. I was told that seven local governments in Olu are uninhabitable. That means people fled completely because of the level of insecurity. And a lot of People, young people also live in those local governments. So what does that mean? They are roaming around the state looking for something to do. That means they are easy for that to cause problem. And then I also was told that um, the local government has a problem. Since Hopo Zodema became governor, mm. for four years he has not conducted local government elections. It means that they have sole administrators who answer to the government. The implication is that there is little or no activity at the local government level. And so all the people that are living at that level, you know, government is supposed to be closer to them. When there is activity, it impacts them positively. They have something to do. That is not happening. And so that is feeding into the high level of employment. It is feeding into the hopelessness. It is feeding into the helplessness. And it is a problem for the government. That's sort of a picture mm. of what is going on in Imo State. That's extraordinary. So it, it is a really dire situation from what you've said. And when you add that to the separatist agitation that is already taking place there, um, you know, it, it's even more worrying. But, but I think what also concerns one is the, given that level of insecurity, despondency, and so on. I, are you concerned that of the potential violence of the politicians against each other, which would be another addition to what is already going on there with the elections, and clearly, as you said, things being very tense and elections approaching? Of course, there is a lot of worry by people, and that is why I was told that there might be a bit of apathy People are not sure whether if they come out to vote, mm. their votes will count because of what happened before. Um, so there are three major zones in Imo State, Olu, Okigwe, and Oweri. The, the governor that, that was removed, Emeka Ihediha from the PDP, who was the one that won the election but was removed by the Supreme Court. Th there was a zoning arrangement, so it was the turn of his zone um, to produce the governor, he became the governor. So when he was removed and Hope was a demand from Olu, became the governor, it caused, it caused a lot of, uh, you know, unrest, political unrest and turmoil because people felt that they had been cheated. It is part of what Hope is dealing with right now. Mm. And so people are very upset with what is going on there. 
Um, and then, of course, I've talked about the unemployment. It's not really an issue of separatists. Separatists here is not the issue. Like the Labour Party candidate said, um, how do you have a government that is unable to solve the insecurity problem? You know, they call them unknown government. There's nothing like unknown government. The security officials, if they want to find the killers, and it is true that they are killing people left, right, and center, you know, going into towns and raising villages, people that have nothing to do with the unrest. It's quite unfortunate. So if the government cannot find a solution to all of these problems, why is it still a, gov a governor? And so people will tell you that the governor moves around in Imo State in large convoys. He's not a man of the people. He himself had mentioned some time ago that he came into power the Ben Johnson way, being, you know, the cheating way. And so you have a lot of this baggage behind him. And so people are very upset. That's a very uh, interesting, perhaps very concerning um, uh, analysis. But I, I'm wondering in those circumstances, beyond obviously just the governor himself, but just the tension going into this election, how does anyone who wins the election start to rebuild trust when it simply doesn't exist at the moment and the place from what I've heard you say, from what I've heard Senator Achonu say, appears to be seething with animosity. So you use the word win. You have to truly win the mm. election to regain the trust of people. People are not stupid. You know, politicians treat human beings or Nigerians as if um, they don't have brains. No, especially people at the local level, they're not that stupid. They see what is going on, they read the situation, they understand. It's just that sometimes they feel like they don't have the power mm. to take over, you know, the power from their government or the, or, or the governor. You know, so you have to win the election. If you win the election, then peace will return because people will feel like, I voted for yes, this person. Yes, and their votes counted. Exactly. Right. So this person is going to work for me. Mm. This person will not work for the forces in Abuja. There's something going on. Before Hope became the governor, the APC did not exist in, 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 in the Southeast. Mm. So when he became the governor, in the State House of Assembly, they did not have one APC member. That's to show you that it wasn't an APC state. With a combination of factors, after he came in, bulldozed his way in, um, it, of course, some uh, decamped to, to APC, and then, of course, the, the control, total control and lockdown of the local government you know, the APC took over everything. And then in, in the, I think in the State Assembly, the last time they had over 25 local governments. So, so they've taken total control. So the, the feeling is that they don't know if the elections will be free and fair. What I hear is that if the elections are free and fair, the APC might not win because people are so tired, mm. tired of the entire episode and drama that has followed this government. But it is your sense that even though the state is battered by insecurity and by, I mean, let's face it, you know, self-serving politicians across the board. It's not just um, the APC. I mean, it, it is your sense that this election can turn the state from disillusionment to hope if it is run properly? Possibly so. If it is done properly, mm. if it is, it is free and fair, if the votes count, it has the possibility to turn it around 360 degrees, no doubt about that. There are challenges, of course. No part of Nigeria is easy to govern. The issues will continue, but a man of the people who is there for the welfare of the people mm. will have the support of his people to, you know, you know, to sort of um, govern because there is a, a total failure of governance. And something that the Labour Party candidate said, he did say that um, in trying to explain how he will govern, he said that he would turn the forest into arable land. I must add that he should be careful with that because you need the forest. You don't want to turn all the forest mm. into uh, arable land because it, in the southeast they have a lot of um, er, uh, problem with erosion. It's because part of the reason is that you're felling yeah, yeah, down you're forest. Yeah, you're cutting down the yes. That's you a need, good point. You need forest for a lot of things, you mm. know, for oxygen production, mm. for habitat and medicinal plants a lot of things so you want to keep 
some and forest. And to preserve yeah, the, the environment, reduce you know, exactly. global warming and exactly. all the rest of it. For climate change, you mm. need to do that. Now, the, the, the Igbo Elders Consultative Forum, uh, a spokesman of theirs was here last week, has called for a high-level meeting between all the governors of the southeast for them to coordinate security in the region as a sort of high-water mark of regional government activism with a view to improving things in Emo State, for instance, ahead of the election. Is that something that you see as possible? It is necessary. Whether the Southeast governors like it or not, they need, they need to come together and form a united front to tackle the insecurity across the region. The federal government can only help you so much. We've mm. always complained about the dichotomy between the federal government and the local government and that policing is local. So you need to um, get together. They, they do have the South East Governors Forum. How functional it is it depends on who leads the forum. So I, I don't know who the, the, the head of the South East Governors Forum is now, but it is critical that they see this as important because there are people that want to return to come and help. They are talking about Akulona, which means if you are abroad, if you are in other parts of Nigeria, come back to the Southeast, help us to build, bring your money, invest and all of that. Nobody wants to come to a place where their heads will be cut, will be cut off, you know, in the process of trying to help their own homeland. So insecurity is key. When they agree together, they, you mean security is yes, key? In, yes, yeah. insecurity. They need, they need to agree together, right. put down the funds, be serious about it, and then it can be done. I want to thank you very much indeed. Very wise um, counsel and analysis <laughs> from you, but that's why you're an Arise News <laughs> analyst. Dr. Constant Eco, journalist, political affairs commentator, and of course, Arise News Analyst, thank you very much. Indeed. You're welcome, Chad. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye bye, and thank you for watching.